Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Life is a quagmire. Uh, what we're going to undertake is a philosophical examination, and so we may ask more questions than we answer. But we are now fortified with tea and amber cake, so we will be fine. Over to you. Please, can you identify, this is your starter for ten, who is A, B and C? Who's going to be the first person to get that? I know I can, yes. Yes. A is Ruth. Who is B? Sam. Sam. Excellent. And therefore C is no problem. David. Absolutely. Fantastic. And after this morning, I'm sure a lot of you would have wanted A and B to maybe connect and leave Ambridge. <laughs> right, so what is lying? Our definition of lying is saying something one believes to be false with the intention to deceive one's listener. So we've got plenty of research out there on lying, and this shows that every single one of us lies several times a day to oil the social wheels, as it were. So this is the research of De Paolo. Children lie from an early age, and some research shows that lying actually relates to developing rationality, so hence intelligence. So this is what Spears and colleagues are working on. Obviously lying is a really hot topic today. We've got fake news all around us, alternative facts, the sexing up of that Iraq dossier. And you won't be surprised that we've got Trump appearing yet again. So we're very used to politicians' lies economical with the truth, fake news, etc. And the fellow de Paolo has been researching lies for many years and you can read that article about Trump. So um, lying has been uh, discussed in philosophy since classical times. Basically, we're looking here uh, at, at, at the discussion. Are moral decisions based on principles, on rules, or are they context specific? So, for example, Socrates, did, it was cognitive virtue to desire, desire truth, so Plato was for you know, truth, we didn't lie, whereas Aristotle distinguished lies belonging to the class of unjust act, where you could decide if an, an act was just, you had to judge it, in the, you had to discern it, like relied on wisdom, <coughs> practical judgment, big, big concept in Aristotle. So, rushing forward 2,000 years, so Aquinas in the 3rd uh, century, the 4th century, sorry, Augustine in the 4th century, Aquinas in the 13th, and Kant in the 18th, for them lying is always wrong. And so you have a famous example in philosophy, you can read it up if you're interested, it's one that resonates through the millennia, is uh, would you lie if you had someone at home and you were protecting them and someone came to the door, soldier, murderer, and you know wanted you to give up that person? So how would you save that person? So Aquinas says, for example, it's lawful to tell a lie, it is not lawful to tell a lie in these circumstances, but it is lawful to hide the truth prudently, as Augustine says. So it's still a discussion today, as you can see from that article there. So when we're thinking about this topic, we're thinking about an axis to have a vertical axis on which we could have uh, benevolent lies and malevolent lies and then we could have on the horizontal axis we could have public lies and private lies and we're going to show you some examples from the arches and you can think of more and several of them could have fitted into any of the quadrants but that's what we've done so uh, there's a, one of uh, Bella de Paolo's books <coughs> about lying to be kind she's also got a blog so we say that Nolly Tando was kind when she helped Kate and she made up a cause of cure uh, for Linda. Neil was very, very kind when he 
said how wonderful Susan looked in that red dress at her 50th. Sorry, Susan, not giving you blonde hair, never mind. <laughs> um, Peggy uh, was very kind when she said, Christi you know, she kept encouraging Christine and Linda Biscuits for the flower and produce shock. And um, we've got the discussion about can, why can we justify some lives and not others? So we we'll get philosophers discussing that. Excusing a lie. Um, so when we do excuse a lie um, for compassionate reasons, how do we? And there's a tension between honesty and benevolence. So um, there often is a, is a tension. Now we're asking about Kenton. So at that parents' evening, when Freddie still had uh, it failed again, failed again. Last year we came and we talked about maths. Uh, Freddie's Maths, he gave a paper. Yeah, uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> can we excuse what did Kenton do? He told Freddie to deceive his mother, and we're asking so, was that the right thing to do? Um, should adults be moral role models? And that's the morals of court, <coughs> not taught argument. <coughs> If Freddie had a good role model, might he be less inclined to risky behaviour like he's doing now with drugs? <coughs> Owning up might be good for the soul and continuing to lie might be drawing him in deeper and deeper. And a question that came to us as educators is how little this aspect of moral education gets talked about in the art. <coughs> And even Alan, the vicar, gets seen as a pantomime director and not as a moral guider. <laughs> <laughs> so we're asking, it's another one of the questions we're asking, it's not necessarily a philosophical question, was the direct, direction of the panto a lost opportunity for some talk about ethics? <laughs> <laughs> so malevolent lies then on that uh, axis are, are, are self-serving. So we've got... Matt lied to Lillian about his business deals, Lillian so many lies about her love life, <laughs> uh, Toby to pick about what he's doing in Brighton, will we ever know? <laughs> Maybe we will now with the baby coming and the new man. Uh, so we've talked about Freddie and the math result and then the recent drug story and Rob's gaslighting uh, are two. So, um, can we excuse public lies. And this is where we get into the moral dilemmas and the slippery slope. And this is where we get to the idea of quagmire and, and, and boggy ground. So there's one, there's a paper, uh, the dilemmas faced by doctors. They must give full information to the patient so the patient can make an informed decision about the treatment, and that's the principle of autonomy. But what happens if the patient can't hear it, it's not good, the patient's well. So they have also to take into account the patient's well-being and minimise suffering, and that's the principle of benevolent. So it's not always easy. So now Harrison and the cricket team lie. <laughs> so there we are. Was Will right to condemn uh, Harrison? Because Harrison was a police officer who <coughs> lied at the AGM about Adam <coughs> Darrington because he had his own, we know why. Did the means, that's another quest for philosophical bit, did the means justify the ends. Were the ends beneficent? There's the good of the team, the village prestige, the community, and that's the means end discussion, and also girl, women in the team. Okay. So, this is my last slide, I'll hand over to Rosalind then. <coughs> so, there's a problem with lying in public life, because lying to someone willfully induces a false belief and misinformation can be harmful. This this Cicela book, Bach book, which is 1976, but it's a really excellent philosophical account about lying. She really does go into great depth. So if you want to pursue that, that's a good book. We feel manipulated and unable to act as we would have acted had we known all along, so we should adhere to the principle of veracity. And this is the point, I think, why the Trump and the why we what we're worried about fake news, etc. Lies deceive and erode trust, and public life ultimately depends on trust. So we're asking, is there a critical mass of lies in public life that undermines society? 
and we need honesty. So looking at the study at the, the bottom, the study by Graham, so in this study, for example, when people were asked to report their most important moral value, the most frequent response was <coughs> honesty. So there's quite a lot of work out there on honesty. And then look at the, the quote above, which is a very new one from Colin Meyer. So without trust, literally, the end result will be that civilizations will clash. So how does this work out in the archers? So what is public line in the archers? So here is a list of people who all had something to gain from their lives, their public lives. So we've got Matt and the scam, Rob and the culvert, Justin, hushing it up, paying off Marek, uh, Joe and Eddie, the pigs, the SSI, Shula, the slab perjury, Pip and the cows. So the question at the end is who owns up and is honest in the end? So there's only two people on this list who owns up quickly. Who are those two? Yes, Shula is one. Absolutely correct. Fantastic. Uh, so only the two at the end own up. So retribution. And here we have the Greek goddess. Ramanusa, the goddess of retribution or nemesis. So the question is, is there a moral heart in the archers? You are going to be discussing this question. We're not educators for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> this is all about hair work. Hair work. Hair work. That's what we do all the time. So I'm going to read your questions. Is there a lack of retribution for lying in the archers? Yes. Do more characters get away with their lies than face up to the consequences? Yes. <coughs> Generally, do liars get their comeuppance? How often do characters confess? <coughs> Does Ambridge have a moral comfort? <laughs> so that's leading to the highlight. We are going to give you two minutes, and what we want you to do is literally to discuss with the person next to you. This is the way we work, and it hopefully it works. Two minutes. Come up with an answer.